Hi and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths, where we look at all of those tricky, nasty types of GCSE question. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths, where we look at all of the types of question which we don't regularly look at. The point of this series is to look at the types of question that the exam examiner has done something slightly different with. So, for instance, stem and leaf diagrams generally are the same three marks. You've got to draw the stem and leaf, you've got to order them, you've got to draw a key. The other stuff on our website, the predicted papers especially, help you with those types of question and hopefully by the time of the exam you are perfect at all of the types of question that come up regularly. But as we know, the examiners are looking for one, two, three questions that throw something out that's completely different. So we're going to be looking in this series at three questions per episode, one at a C and a D grade, one at a B grade, and one at an A and A star grade. So there's a lovely variety there for anyone doing the higher. If you are doing the foundation, then just focus on question one, just focus on the first one. When you viewed this video, if you want to have a go at these questions, go to our website, onmaths.com. On the website, you don't have to log in and it's completely free. You can just try the paper, it will mark it for you and it will always, it also show you the answer as well. And it will give you a grade, it's really, really powerful uh, revision resource. You can just log in whenever you like, try a paper and then get a score from it and then see if you can try and improve it. The wonderful thing about the website as well is it's 100% mobile phone, tablet, whatever. You can, you can log on to it whatever device you have, wherever you are, which is great. <laughs> Not that I'm plugging it too much, but it's a great resource. And it now shows you the correct answer, which the old version didn't. It now shows you what the answer is, so you can try and work out how the, how the answer was found. And if you have any problems, I've made videos on all of the different types of questions. So, without me talking anymore, let's get started. So this first one is the D and C grade question. Let's bring it up. And it's a question on triangle area and algebra. So two things that have been mashed together, which maybe you're not used to um, putting them together. If you like to have a go at this question, please pause the video now and have a go. Okay, let's have a go at this question. So, first thing to realise is obviously we haven't got any of the lengths of this triangle. It's all in algebra. But it does tell us that the perimeter is 56 centimetres. So there's a start. We know what the lengths are as expressions as well. So, with this type of question, if you do know a number for something and you do know an algebraic expression for something, then you can solve it. You can find out what the, what the different lengths are. The way to do that is look at what this number represents. It represents the perimeter. What is the perimeter? It's the distance around a shape. Okay, So we can work out the distance around this shape as letters and we do know it as a number. Okay, So if I use this line for, for, for helping me with this. So this is it as letters and this is it as a number and we'll come back to that number bit in a second so as letters it is 3x plus 6 for this length here plus x minus 6 plus 3x And let's uh, collect the like terms. So 3x plus x plus 3x is 7x. And 6 take away 6 is nothing. As a number, it is 56. And because both this and this represent the perimeter, we put an equal sign there. Now, if you put an equal sign there, most exams you get a mark for saying that 7x is equal to 56. Then I can divide 7 both sides, and that gives me x on this side, 
and 8 on this side. And if you didn't know 56 divided by 7 was 8, there's a clever way of remembering it. 5, 6, 7, 8. 56 is 7 times 8. I think it was Carol Vorderman, if you know who she is, she, uh, she said that, so there we go. Okay, we, it doesn't ask us for what x is, it asks for the area. And this is again why this is quite a tricky question. To find the area, we need a formula. And the formula for area is area equals half times the base times the height. This, that's the area of a triangle. Now the base and the height touch each other at right angles, so these two touch each other at right angles, so this is my base and this is my height, okay, and let's label that, height and base, okay, so the height and the base always hit each other at right angles, we call that perpendicular. So we do half times the base, now we don't know what the base is yet, well it says the base is 3x and we know that x is 8. 3 times 8 is 24, so we know that the base is 24. Again, the height, we don't know what it is yet, so let's work it out. It says x minus 8, well we know x is 8, uh, sorry, eight, x minus 6, we know x is 8, so it's 8 take away 6, which is 2. Now we can be a bit lazy here, we don't have to really do much to this because it's half times 2, and that will equal 1, and 24 times 1 is just 24. So the half and the 2 sort of cancel each other out there, and so my answer is 24. Now you might say, well hang on, surely you should have centimetres squared there. Well, because of the way the question's written, it says the area of the triangle is A centimetres squared, work out the value of A. So actually with this one we don't need to put the units, however if you did put the units in your exam question, then you wouldn't lose a mark. So that is the first question uh, and that's a B stroke C grade question so it's not too bad after all. Let's have a look at a B grade question. So this is a B grade question and all of these have been inspired by previous exam questions. So I'm not terribly original although I've put my own twist on them because I want you to be as prepared as you can for the types of thing that you will have to face when you're taking the exam. So let's have a look at this one. So this is an area and volume scale factor, so that might give you a clue. If you'd like to have a go at this, please press pause now. Okay, let's give this a go. So, let's have a look at what uh, what's in the question. It says we've got two similar cuboids. Now, that word there, I was supposed to press highlight there, but for some reason it didn't work. So, similar, it says there, that it gives the game away of how to do this question. We've got two lengths, so it's 18 and 9, and again, that helps us with the question, so that's a valuable piece of information, because you might notice to get from 9 to 18, we times by 2. Now it says B has a volume of 60, what is the volume of A? Now, some of you, most of you, will have the absolute temptation to say 120. And that's what this question is really trying to lure you into doing. It's not 120, and I'm going to show you how, why. We know that the length and that's really come out dodgy. The length scale factor is 2. Notice I've put the word, or I've tried to put the word length. The linear or length scale factor is 2. But, how many dimensions does area have? Well, a length has one dimension, an area has two dimensions. So it's not just going to be 2, it's going to be 2 times 2. So the area scale factor is going to be 2 squared, or 4. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. The volume scale factor has three dimensions. So it's not just 2, and it's not just times another 2, it's going to be times 2 again. So 2 cubed, or 8. So the area scale factor is going to be 4, 
and the volume scale factor is going to be 8. So if you try and remember that yes a length scale factor, the length scale factor is 2 but you've got to times it by the linear scale factor or the length scale factor for every dimension. Now this question is talking about volume the volume 60 so we have to do 60 times not 2 but times 8 times 2 for each dimension now I know that 6 times 8 is 48 so 60 times 8 is 480 and that's going to be the answer 480 and that might seem foreign you might think oh hang on if I double that surely it's just going to be double well, if you think about it how many of those would fit into that? Well, looking at it, it's going to be four at the bottom and four at the top. It's going to be eight of these that will fit into that. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So the temptation for this one is you think, oh, okay, I'm going to be clever here. Area scale factor is four, therefore it's 360 times four. No, and the reason being is that it's cuboid A which is the bigger one, has the total surface area of 360. So this time we are reducing, we're going down, we're decreasing. If you times to increase, if you times to go this way, then to go from here to here, we're going to do the opposite of timesing. And the opposite of timesing is dividing. Easy way to divide by 4 is you halve it, then halve it again. What's nice about 360 is I know that half of it is 180 and half of it again is 90 because of circles and angles and triangles. <laughs> so the answer to that is going to be 90 centimeters squared. If you want to check it, well, if this one's 90 and the area scale factor is 4, 90 times 4 is 360, so it works going the other way as well. And that is the B grade demon question. Okay, let's move on. So, oh, so we're now on to the last question, the A stroke A star grade question. Let's see what, what comes up. So difference of two thirds. If you want to have a go at it, please press pause on the video now. Okay, let's have a go. So, uh, the key to this question is the fact that it looks really hard, it looks really difficult, but actually if you break it down, it's not that difficult. It looks difficult because you're used to half of this question, you're used to just one of these, just one, what I like to call quadratic third. Okay, and that's not technically what it's called, but you use the same process as when you do quadratics. So, what's difficult is it's got two of them. Now, there's two ways of doing this. One involves um, using difference of two squares, uh, the same process as that. I'm not going to do that process because I don't think it's very helpful for this question. I think it's much easier just breaking it down, expanding each of these separately, and then seeing what you end up with. However, if you do find an easier and quicker way, please use it. So, I'm going to expand these separately and I'm going to put them both into brackets so we, we know exactly what we're doing. Um, if you don't know how to use foil, in one of the predicted papers I have gone through how to use foil, I'm not going to use foil, I'm just going to do it all in my head. So 3 times 3 is going to be 9 and then I've got 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2 so that's going to be plus 6 root 2 and then root 2 times root 2 which is just going to be plus 2. Okay, A square root times itself is going to be just the number. Take away and let's expand this one. So it's again 3 times 3 is 9. We've got minus 3 root 2 time, uh, plus minus 3 root 2 so that's going to be minus 6 root 2 and then we've got minus root 2 times minus root 2 which is going to be plus 2. Okay, so I want to get rid of these brackets now. Now this first one's easy because there's nothing on the outside so I can just get rid of them. This one here though has a minus on the outside. Now some people think that if there's a minus on the outside of it just make that 9 minus and all is fine. 
No, it's not. Technically speaking, that minus there is a minus one. And you know that when you've got a number outside a bracket, you've got to times that number by everything inside the bracket. Okay, uh, I mean with smiles and rainbows or whatever method you use. So minus one times nine, minus one times minus six roots two, minus one times uh, two. So let's get rid of these brackets and let's times everything in that second bracket by that minus one. So minus one times nine is minus nine. Minus one times minus six root two is going to be positive six root two. Minus 1 times positive 2 is going to be a minus 2. Now you might notice something now. The 9 here and the minus 9 here cancel each other out. The positive 2 here and the negative 2 here cancel each other out. So all we're left with is 6 root 2 plus 6 root 2, which is 12 root 2. And therefore it says it wants it in this form, so it's going to be 12 root 2. So my answer is A is 12 and B is 2. And that's the answer. And that's the end of the questions. Hurrah! So, those are the three questions we're doing today. I'm going to do a whole load more of these videos. I'm hoping to do at least one a week. I'm doing three at the moment. This is the first of three. Uh, so there's going to be a few out there in quick succession. If you have your own demon question, either from a previous exam question or from a textbook, revision guide, or one you've just made up, please let us know. The address for letting us know is on there. And so you can see we've got Twitter, we've got YouTube comments, Facebook, and our website as well. All of the questions I've just shown you and all the questions I'm going to do on Demon or, or otherwise are on the website. There's full predictions for the higher Edexcel GCSE papers now and there's predictions for the other ones coming as soon as I can write them. Uh, all of the questions we have on the website mark themselves. They all show you the answer. Um, they all uh, give you a grade at the end of doing each of the papers. Uh, I've got demon questions just for these three I've done today and I've got a paper which covers all of the demon questions that, I've, that I'm covering uh, in all the videos. So that's going to be quite a long one in, a, in maybe a few months time. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click like. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, please click subscribe. Thank you very much.